There are a lot of things that you should know before traveling to Japan, but I'm sure that you already know that because you clicked on the video. So here we go, 50 things you should know before traveling to Japan as a sample to my brand new travel guide Beyond the Tourist Trail, which is out now on my website. Starting with number one, you should always carry cash on you because you're almost certain to come across a restaurant or a shop or something that doesn't accept credit cards. Number two, wear your most comfortable walking shoes because you will be doing a lot of walking in Japan. Number three is that you should always keep your passport on you for legal purposes. If you're ever stopped by the police in Japan for any reason, they're gonna ask you either for your residence card or your passport. So just always have it on you just in case. Number four, have your passport on you for tax purposes. <laughs> if you're gonna be buying anything expensive like electronics and things like that, if you present your passport, then you can get it tax free. So yay for cheap shopping. <laughs> Number five is the big one, masks. Can't wait to get into this topic. <laughs> Technically, Japan has not now nor ever had a mask mandate per se. They've just had a lot of recommendations from the government. So that means that 99.9% .9 of Japanese people are wearing masks at all times. Recently, Japan has actually downgraded the classification of like the severity of COVID. So now it's on the same level as the flu. They are now saying, they're now recommending and encouraging people to take off their masks outside. My kind of general rule that I go by, if I am indoors on public transport in a crowded place, I put on a mask. If I'm outside or I'm walking by myself, I take it off and nobody has been offended thus far. So I recommend that you do the same. Speaking of COVID, Japan still has entry procedures. So you either have to be fully vaccinated and boosted and have proof of that, or you need to have a negative PCR test taken within 72 hours of boarding your flight to go to Japan. Uh, you have to log all of this online via a website. I will leave a link for that down below. Make sure that you do that before getting to your flight because you will waste money otherwise. <laughs> to get the most out of your trip, you should definitely get internet. You can just get it at the airport. The prices are pretty competitive. You can get either a SIM card or a Wi-Fi egg. A Wi-Fi egg is kind of like a portable router. So if you're traveling in a group of people, then that can be a really economical option. Uh, but keep in mind, it'll be a little bit slower and you will have to charge it every night. But the choice is up to you. This next one's for the Americans. You don't need to tip in Japan. I've heard some people say that it's like rude to tip in Japan. I wouldn't say it's rude, but I would say it's unnecessary and just kind of confusing. The main three travel locations in Japan are Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto. They're often referred to as the Golden Triangle, which means that there will be a lot of people there. So I highly recommend going off the beaten track into lesser known places, which brings me to my brand new travel guide Beyond the Tourist Trail, which is now available on my website. Japan is constantly rated as one of the top travel destinations in the world and places can get insanely busy. What do you think, Andrew? It's my own personal nightmare. <laughs> which is why I've created the ultimate travel guide to help you avoid the crowds and have a truly unique experience in Japan. Beyond the Tourist Trail is an ebook with over 150 pages of 20 top hidden gems and 100 plus extra off the beaten track locations. It includes step-by-step -step travel tips, exact location pins, public transport information, and maps presented beautifully in one easy to access PDF. I've been living in Japan for over eight years now, so I know that there is so much free advice out there already. But one thing that I've noticed with this advice is that it's hard to know if they're like speaking from experience or if they just went to Japan that one time for a week and then threw together a list video. Um, <laughs> I've personally seen some very, very big YouTubers uh, give some inaccurate and frankly just bad advice for traveling to Japan. I've personally traveled to every single hidden gem listed in this guide, so I know that my advice is accurate, it's realistic and thorough. I'm already giving you a lot of tips in this video, but there's even more of them in the guide along with Japanese phrases that you should learn and even a survival guide for vegans and vegetarians. This is the first time that all of my travel tips and favorite locations have ever been compiled together in one place. So avoid the crowds, support the locals, and get ready for a truly unique experience in Japan with Beyond the Tourist Trail available now. Link in the description. Thank you so much. I've spent so much time and effort on this and I think you're going to love it. Oh, I need a drink of water. <laughs> there are very few trash cans around in the city and at train stations and stuff. So just keep your trash with you and throw it out when you get back to the hotel. Number 11, there are so many staircases in Japan. So try to avoid changing hotels and traveling with the large suitcase as much as possible. Number 12, there are two times of the year that you should not travel Japan in. They are Golden Week and Obon. And these are two kind of groups of public holidays in Japan. So that's when all of the Japanese companies go on holiday, which means that a lot of places will be shut and 
everywhere will be busy. So just look those dates up on the internet. They change every year, but avoid them at all costs. There is a particular scam that happens in Tokyo that generally targets foreign men. I'm not super familiar with it, but a bunch of YouTubers have made videos about it already. Basically, the gist of it is that uh, you get lured into a club, you talk to these pretty girls and you buy drinks for you and for them. But what you don't realize is that the drinks are like hundreds of dollars and you can walk away with a bill that's like $5,000. So watch those videos mentioned and uh, yeah, avoid them if you can. This next one is less of a tip and more of a plug, but there is still spots available on my travel with me trip happening in August this year. So if you would like to travel to some of the places actually listed in my travel guide and you'd like to travel with me, go and check out the link in the description for that. The next category is for transports. Number one, buy yourself a tap and go public transportation card. So this is either Pasmo, Suica or Ecoca. Very easy, very convenient. You can use it on buses and on trains and you can also use it at the convenience store, which is very, very handy. When you're on the train in Japan, please try to talk as quietly as you can um, and don't eat anything because these would be considered rude. Taxis in Japan are quite expensive, so I avoid them as much as I can, uh, especially to and from the airport because it can be over $100 one way. While we're on the topic, Uber, Lyft, rideshare apps, those are not really a thing in Japan. Like you can, you can download it and you can still use it, but it won't send you a ride sharing like random dude. It will just hail you a taxi. So it's convenient, but you're not gonna save any money. Personally, I always just use Google Maps to plan my public transportation trips in Japan for trains and buses. I've heard a lot of people say that like other apps are better or more accurate. I have never had any issues with Google Maps. It's very accurate, it's very reliable. Um, it tells you like how much it is, the departure time, duration, what platform you should get on. It even tells you like what train carriage to get in for a faster transfer at your next station. It's great, big fan of Google Maps. <laughs> Trains in Japan usually stop at around 12.30 or 1 a.m. So plan accordingly. The next category is for driving. If you can drive in Japan, I highly, highly recommend it. It'll make things a lot easier for you. Not every country is eligible for an international driver's permit, so go check out the link in the description to see if your country is. If you are gonna drive in Japan, I've heard people say that they're very nervous about the idea. Personally, I don't think you've got anything to worry about unless you plan on like driving through Shibuya Crossing and the back alleys of Higashi Osaka, which I did that one time in my Jeep. Um, I found it to be uh, quite normal. Japanese drivers tend to be quite safe and non-aggressive. So uh, yeah, I haven't had any issues with it. Signs are often written in Japanese and in English. And uh, yeah, the speed limits are quite lenient. <laughs> the next category is language barriers. English proficiency is quite low in Japan, so I highly recommend learning some Japanese phrases for travel on the go. I have made a whole video about that, so go check it out. And it's also a whole section in my travel guide available now on my website. <laughs> if you don't speak any Japanese at all and you're speaking to someone who doesn't speak much English, speak very slowly, as few words as possible, and very simple, simple words. This sounds like common sense, but I swear some people just have no idea. <laughs> a lot of Japanese words are English loan words. So for example, toilet is toire in Japanese. So sometimes, sometimes if you don't know what the word is, <laughs> you can like slow it down, elongate each syllable and they might understand you. So for example, like speaker is subika. Oh, fluent. Hotel, hoteru. Yeah, that's it. I can speak Japanese now. <laughs> the Google Translate camera function will translate any written Japanese text for you. And also the Google Translate voice to text function can really speed up conversation. Pretty good. If you're a photographer and you wanna take a photo of a geisha or a maiko in Kyoto, please try to be as courteous as possible and know that in the Gion district, it's actually forbidden. This is because a lot of photographers were acting like paparazzi and chasing after them and it kind of got in the way of their work, so they've banned it entirely. So just be as courteous as you can. In some temples and shrines and busy locations, tripods will be forbidden. If you wanna fly a drone in Japan, it doesn't have to be as complicated as websites will make it seem, uh, just follow the these rules right here and don't fly in any cities at all because uh, it's a no-fly zone. There's too many people there. I have made a whole entire video about it, so go check it out. As of June 2022, unfortunately, you now have to register your drone online and have some kind of remote ID function set up. I have done this before. It's not it's not super complicated and it's all in English, but it is quite time consuming. Um, so unless you're like traveling out to the countryside a lot and you want to get a lot of drone footage, 
it might not really be worth it for you, but you know, you can weigh that option. The link is in the description. And also the 250 gram rule is not a thing in Japan. It is 100 grams, so don't even think about it. <laughs> the next category is food. And I think that you should try all of it because it's great. Uh, the food hygiene standards are very high in Japan, so it's very unlikely that you're gonna get sick from it. It is also legal to drink on the streets. Convenience stores sell alcohol available at any time of the day, so have fun. Speaking of drinks, tap water is safe to drink in Japan. I've heard a lot of people say that it's not, but those people would be lying because I've been drinking it for eight years and I'm fine. <laughs> no, seriously though, it is fine to drink it. You don't have to buy plastic water bottles all the time. If you're vegan or vegetarian, unfortunately, it can be quite tricky, but not impossible to travel in Japan. Uh, I've made a whole video about the topic. I can't remember which side it's on. So otherwise, I would just use the Happy Cow app to find like the closest restaurant, or you could buy my travel guide that has a whole section for vegans and vegetarians. Uh, I'll stop. In the countryside, it's not uncommon to have restaurants and places just be closed on like a random day of the week for no reason. It's just like that sometimes. Some restaurants will close between 2 to 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. So just make sure they have lunch on time to avoid disappointment. This next category is for the ladies. Japan's quite safe for solo travelers. I do it by myself all of the time, hence my YouTube channel. But in saying that, there have been a lot of very bad experiences that I've had with men here. Yeah, it's it's a really big topic and I don't know what the right answer is and there's so much more I could go into about it. But for now, I would just say that it's something that you should be aware of. I wouldn't trust when people say Japan is completely safe because a lot of women would disagree with that. In general, I would say I feel a lot safer walking down a street at nighttime in Japan than I would in Australia or America. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that there's a lot of people People around in Japan so a lot of witnesses <laughs> but yeah you know there's still a lot of things that I'm quite cautious of dressing modestly is quite important in Japan but the standards are quite different from what is considered very normal in the West so for example you can wear shorts and skirts and things in Japan and that's fine but uh, if you're wearing like a tank top or like spaghetti straps or showing off your leg Decolletage that is considered to be quite revealing in Japan and I only realized this like six years into living there But in saying that you can still just dress at your own comfort level It's just something you should be aware of speaking of modesty another rule that I only found out like in the past couple of years Is that apparently if you're wearing shorts that are like tight against your skin that is okay uh, But if you're wearing shorts that kind of like come out a little bit that's considered like risque or just risky in general because uh, people could take a photo up your skirt or your shorts, which has happened to me actually. Yeah, so there's <laughs> that's a reason why if you buy an iPhone in Japan, then you can't turn off the camera shutter sound, even if you put it on silent. Hi, quick editor's note here. Uh, I should also probably add that I don't know this for a fact. This is just something that uh, a Japanese man has told me in the past, but I don't know. I'm sure everyone has their own different opinions about it. It's a touchy topic. It just, <laughs> pun. Uh, basically, I'm not speaking for the entirety of all of Japan when I say this. Um, yeah, it's it's subjective. So yeah, if you would like to curb any of these kind of unwanted advances, uh, when you're catching the train in peak hour, they will have ladies only carriages. So that will make you feel a lot safer. Other things that I have personally done in the past that I think has worked because I haven't been chicaned too recently. I dress like more incognito. I don't wear as bright colors. I don't wear like spaghetti straps and stuff like that anymore. I have a less approachable face and I've also aged. So that, <laughs> That has worked out well for me, actually. <laughs> in all seriousness though, like, I know I'm joking about it, but uh, this is a very serious and big issue that a lot of women in Japan have had to deal with, myself included. Um, so yeah, it's something that you should be aware of if you're traveling there. It's generally quite safe, but there are things that you should be aware of. The next category is experiences. If you wanna stay at a Japanese style hotel or a ryokan or a ryokan, be prepared to pay per person per night. Not every place will do this, but just be aware of that when you're booking it. Please, please, please try going to an onsen. They are amazing and they're like my favorite experience ever and it's not as weird as you would think it is to bathe naked with strangers. It's liberating, it's body positive. I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> Speaking of onsens, if you have a very large tattoo, unfortunately you won't be allowed into most onsens unless they are specifically like a tattoo friendly onsen. But if you have like a small tattoo or just like a little baby one, you could probably cover that with a bandage or a band-aid, plaster, whatever you want to call it, sports tape, um, and no one will notice. Just don't tell them I told you to. Yes, you can wear kimono in Japan and nobody will think it's weird or inappropriate. I've made a whole video about that, so go check it out. 
whichever side it's on. <laughs> the last category is culture. So I'm sure that you already know that generally Japan is quite a polite and respectful society. So uh, just be on good behavior, you know, be courteous, respectful, all of that. I say this though, I was reminded of it because I'm in Australia at the moment and I saw a kid the other day just like, full on like watch it, like karate kick one of the pedestrian buttons that you normally press with your hand he like kicked it with his foot and i was like oh <laughs> wow culture shock <laughs> and that brings me to my last point which is uh if you like kind of accidentally break a rule or you you do something culturally disrespectful or something like that by accident I really wouldn't stress about it. Generally, Japanese people will see foreigners, and if I can say particularly Caucasian foreigners, they'll kind of give them a free pass just in general and be like, well, they don't know the rules. Even if you have been living there for eight years, <laughs> uh, it's a blessing and a curse. So honestly, I, I, I just have seen a lot of these videos around and they're like, it's so disrespectful to eat while walking. And it's like, I don't know, people draw these giant conclusions um, that I don't think are necessary. I think Japanese people are very polite and they are hospitable usually. I think you're gonna have a great time and I don't think that you should worry too much about like accidentally doing the wrong thing. Just be polite and courteous and everything will be fine. And that's it. Holy cow, what a long, what a long video. Ah! I hope that this was as helpful and as valuable to you as I hope it was. That was a bad sentence, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, go and check out my travel guide if you haven't already. And yeah, thank you for watching. Bye. Oh, in the nick of time, oh my gosh, I've just run out of space on the SD card. I need a snack.